Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. I've been anticipating picking up this knife for a little bit now. This is the Case Medium Toothpick in the natural zebra wood smooth covers. And um, this is a new series from Case for 2024, the uh, zebra wood covers. Uh, they have actually seven knives in this series to date. I don't know if they'll be introducing any more than that. Um, so I thought I would take a look at this and um, tell you what I think about it. Now, obviously, it's a medium toothpick. Medium toothpicks is not something that everybody collects. But if you're interested in the zebra wood, you might want to stick around anyway. I will show the other six knives uh, that are in the series um, at the beginning of the slideshow that will follow the review of the knife. Now, before I go into great detail on the knife or anything, you can see the back spring here and the liners. Uh, does not look like there's much of a gap in there, but if you look real close, you can see a little bit of a gap there. And I tell you what, if you open it up and you try and shine a light through there, yeah, you will see a little bit of light seep through. So if that is a major concern of you with a case knife, well, uh, it's going to happen. Um, and to tell you the truth, in about 99% uh, of my slip joints that I own, some kind of light will seep through there. And the ones that don't have light seeping through there, it's usually because there's crud in there. So a little bit of dust and dirt got in there. And I really just need to clean up the knife and then uh, that light will shine again. Um, that even includes my GECs. So... I don't know that's the best test or anything. And if you notice right here, the blade alignment is not straight down the center. So if that is a, a deal killer for you on uh, the uh, medium toothpick, especially this one, well, um, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, this is not a major problem for me. Neither is the light. Now, you did see an earlier video where I had a small toothpick and the uh, the blade was actually almost touching. This one is not as bad. It isn't perfectly down the middle, as you can see here, but it is nowhere near touching the side. Um, the other one, I just had enough space to basically slip a piece of paper between. And this one I could slip uh, a card between, I guess, I don't know. Um, I know some people that would just drive them nuts. It's not that big of a deal to me. As long as it's not hitting the side. As soon as it hits the side, it's time to send the knife back. I mean, honestly, that's what you need to do. If it is hitting the side, if the blade alignment is so screwed up that it is already hitting the side when you get it, or if the gap is so big in there that you feel that you could drive a truck through it, send it back but don't send it back this case send it back to whoever you bought the knife from you know if you bought it from shepherd hills if you bought it from smoky mountain knife works if you bought it from the knife center wherever it was that you bought the knife from if the quality of the knife is not up to your standards notice i said your standards send it back to the retailer you bought it from now why do i say this because the retailer has more pull than you do when it comes to talking to Case. If you complain to the retailer and say, I don't want this knife, the quality isn't good enough, and you send it back to the retailer, I get it. Maybe you've lost a little bit of money on, uh, on the uh, shipping and handling or whatever like that. That is on the retailer. Uh, and at that point, I would start saying to the retailer, I'm not going to be using you anymore if every time you send me a crappy knife and I send it back, I have to pay to send it back to you. Also, you're going to pay shipping if you send it the case. So that's the other thing. Now, I know with SMKW, yes, you pay the shipping up front, but then they reimburse you whenever they reimburse you for the price of the knife. So you will get your shipping money back if you're using SMKW. I believe the same thing happened with uh, when I sent a knife back to Shepherd Hills. They also reimbursed me for the shipping. It wasn't right away, but I did get the reimbursement. 
Now, when you send the knife back to the retailer, the retailer is not going to be eating the price of the knife. I know some less than reputable retailers will just rebox it and ship it out to somebody else and hope they don't complain. But mostly what retailers will do is when they have a knife that is unsatisfactory, they send it back to the factory. And when the retailers start complaining about the quality of the knife, that's when the factories start listening. Um, it's, it's truth to be told because the retailers are the ones who are paying for the knife from the factory. And if the retailers are not satisfied with the knife, the factories need to do something because then the retailers are not going to buy it. Case does not make money selling knives to individuals. They make money selling it to retailers. And if the retailers are not happy with the quality because their customers are not happy with the quality, then Case will start responding. So if you're really not that crazy about a knife that has a blade that is not perfectly centered, send it back to the retailer. You know, it's a little bit of a hassle. I get that, but that's the way um, uh, the the things will get corrected by the retailers complaining to Case, not by you complaining to Case or you coming on to a YouTube channel or having a YouTube channel and complaining about Case all the time. You're one person. Retailers sell to thousands of people. If the retailer starts getting knives returned, they take notice, they complain to the factories. The factories either uh, respond or they start losing contracts to retailers. And if they start losing contracts to retailers, that cuts into their profit. One person on a YouTube channel complaining about the quality of a knife is not gonna make a big difference to case. Just my opinion. Okay, let's talk about this knife now. Now, as I already mentioned, I collect the medium toothpicks by case. And uh, what attracted me to this one to begin with is the fact that it is in zebra wood. And zebra wood is one of those um, woods that I really do enjoy. I like the looks of zebra wood. I love the, uh, the contrasting lines in it and everything else. And I saw this one when it showed up, and I tell you what, it really pops. And, uh, you know, rubbing my hand across it, it feels really good. There's a certain warmth to it. I can indeed feel a little bit of the transition here from uh, from the uh, wood going into the bolster. There's actually a little bit of a rough spot there, um, and it might have been where the wood was cut. It's not awful. It's not horrible. I could probably smooth it down with a little bit of sandpaper if I wanted to. I probably will leave it as it is. The transition, though, is not bad at all. There's just that one little burnish mark right there. That might go away just from me rubbing on it, too. Um, this side, much better. The back side is better. Um, yeah, I thought at first I might be able to catch my nail there, but I can't. I try real hard, I can catch it right there. As I mentioned, I don't see any serious gapping here. Looks very good, but if I hold it up to a very bright light and look through on the opposite side, I definitely can see a little bit of light shine through. Not a whole lot. You can see it has definitely got the mirror polish going on there. My fingerprints are all over the place. You got the Case Long Tail C uh, uh, shield going on, and it is smooth to the wood, and the grain in the wood really pops, especially compared to other knives that I have in zebra wood. Um, here's this one uh, by, uh, who is this? This is um, the Frost Mule Skinner. This is supposed to be zebra wood. Uh, does not look at all like what zebra wood should look like, but this is sold as zebra wood uh, for a $7 knife or an $8 knife, something like that. Not bad. Might have been as high as $12, but in any case, not truly zebra wood, even though it was sold as zebra wood. Um, these are my two Cattleman Cutlery knives. This one is closer to what a zebra wood is supposed to be, but 
if it is you can see the quality of it is not quite the same the the grain and the contrast just isn't just doesn't pop the same way and that's really what i was looking for in this these are zebra wood but they're not the best of zebra wood this one is all sorts of blurred um hard to even think of this as zebra wood it looks like something else but it's supposed to be zebra wood this is the way zebra wood should be looking and this they really got it good this is some really nice looking wood on there for what it is and then uh, we open it up oh and this is not just the cross grain of a wood showing through this is the actual grain of zebra wood the way it contrasts like that got the blade showing up here blade came mirror polished where's a uh, rag to wipe off all my nasty fingerprints um i will tell you now that this one did not have the best uh, grind. It was not the most even grind that I have seen on my um, toothpick knives, um, but it's not bad. It definitely cuts. It's got a decent enough edge to do some cutting and stuff. The polish on the nickel silver is fantastic. You drop it, you know, it's got the little bit of bump. There's no catching into the blade here at the end. And like I mentioned, it is not perfectly centered, but it also does not hit. As long as it's not hitting, I'm pretty happy with it. The other thing that uh, a lot of people look for in the uh, toothpicks is, does the blade have any twist in it? Sometimes the blade will twist at the very end. I do not feel any kind of twist in the blade. Um, and actually, when I'm going to the tip here, the grind feels pretty even too, but it does not look as even as it should be. Um, so if you're uh, really nitpicky about the grind, um, you're not going to be too happy about this knife at all. Now, uh, this is just one example. I will probably pick up a second one of these uh, when I'm down at SMKW in person and uh, if they're still in stock, that's that's my plan. And at that point, I will hand pick one and see how that compares to this one. But all in all, I'm very pleased with the knife. Um, I pointed out um, in great detail what was wrong with it, but really, um, that's it. And if those are the things that, um, you know, frost your butt, then I would definitely say just stay away from case knives. But if um, if you can live with the fact that you can see a little bit of light passing through the back spring, um, then uh, I don't think it's an issue at all. Uh, the other knives in the series, well, obviously you're going to want that blade to be uh, straight and not hitting anything on your um, your trapper and your mini trapper and also on the uh, lockback that's in the series. And I think there's also a locking copperhead. Someone told me I need to pick up a locking copperhead. Uh, maybe I'll pick up the locking copperhead in, um, in the zebra wood. I don't have a locking copperhead by case. So maybe I'll do that. But in any case, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. I really do like it. Yeah, the blade could have been a little bit better centered. And yeah, there's a little bit of light if you really look for it that'll pass through there. What I would have been upset with is if um, there would have been gapping between the wood and the brass liners. That would have really been an issue with me. Or if I noticed that there were, uh, that the wood was not properly pinned with these brass pins. Brass pins are really well polished. Yeah. And it is well pinned. So I'm not, I don't have a problem with that. All in all, I'm just very pleased with the knife. So uh, stick around and we'll show you some slides. As I started working on the slideshow, I did notice something else about the knives. Uh, and this is something that is happening with all of the uh, 
current release uh, WR Case and Sun Knives, and that is the tank stamp. And this is something I mentioned before in another video. If you notice, it is not that deep stamping like they used to do with the tank stamps. This is almost like a laser etch. I don't know if it's a stamp or not. It does appear to be more like a, a deep laser etch on the blades. Um, some of them have been very light. This one is at least a, a little deeper and it looks like it's going to remain in place better than some of the other uh, laser etchings that I've seen. And I think they've been doing that to the back side even longer. But the front side tank stamp is definitely a deep laser etch. The back side is a lighter laser etch. And um, I have a feeling that with time, um, this could easily wear off. So I don't know. It is something to point out. Um, for some people, that would be another nail in the coffin when it comes to uh, collecting case knives. But um, some collectors might look at that as a plus because um, if the edge is wearing off, then the knife is definitely getting used and uh, they're, they're not getting something new. And that's uh, one of the reasons why uh, some companies used to use like a blade etch or something so that you would notice if the knife had been used or not, if there was damage done to the blade etch. But this one, just from the blade opening and closing, that etch might get messed up. Anyway, something else to point out for you and for the case haters to complain about. Uh, with that, let's get back to the slides.
let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with the Pies. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.